With the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs upon us, I want to take you guys through my round-by-round -round predictions and my pick for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. But before we do that, I want to talk about all 16 drivers, starting from the 16th seed and going in ascending order. Sixteen seed, Martin Truex Jr. Truex is having his worst statistical season since 2014. Truex only has four top fives and nine top tens, and only has two top tens in the last 14 races. Truex is ice cold heading into the playoffs, and I hate to say this, especially because it is his final season, I could realistically see him being eliminated in the round of 16. He doesn't have the best track record at drafting tracks, and he's been hit or miss on road courses and short tracks in the next gen car. He also doesn't have the playoff points he did last season. And another thing that no one is talking about is that he only made the playoffs by 6 points, but this was masked by him being locked in after stage 2 at Darlington. Truex has lucked his way into the playoffs this year, and I just can't see him making it past the first round. The 15 seed Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs has avoided the sophomore slump and has greatly improved over his rookie season. He already has three more top fives and one more top ten than last season, and has improved his average finish by four positions. This is a building year for Gibbs. A successful playoff run for him would be to make the round of 12 and contend for the round of 8. 14 seed, Harrison Burton. Harrison Burton broke through in a big way, getting his first career win and getting the Wood Brothers their 100th win. But let's come back down to earth for a minute. The only way Harrison Burton is making a deep playoff run is if he wins both Atlanta and Talladega. Now I am happy for Harrison Burton to finally get a win after three seasons of him struggling, but let's all be honest with ourselves. There's no way he is making any impact in the playoff picture and is 100% a round of 16 exit. 13 seed Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe came in clutch when it mattered, holding off one of the sports best of all time in Kyle Busch. Briscoe has had a decent season on a lame duck team. Right now, he is having a season that is on par with his 2022 campaign, and we all know how that turned out. But I have a hard time believing he'll do something like that again. Historically, he is hit or miss at both Atlanta and Watkins Glen, and has never recorded a top 10 finish at Bristol, but he does have three top 15s in four races, so that's something. But honestly, I think a deep playoff run is not on the cards for Chase Briscoe. 12 seed, Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman has had a solid bounce back season. He has eclipsed his top 5 and top 10 totals from last year, and he has also finally broke his winless streak by winning the Chicago Street Course. But since that win, he only has one top 15 finish, and is currently on a streak of 5 races finishing outside the top 15. Now while he is ice cold right now, the Hendrick cars usually come alive in the playoffs, and I don't think that it will be any different for Bowman this year. Bowman could easily make the round of 12, and I think Bowman will contend for the round of 8. 11 seed, Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez got a win earlier in the year at Atlanta, but it has been a struggle ever since. Suarez only has 13 top 20s in the last 24 races, and Suarez also has the third worst average finish amongst the playoff drivers. Since joining Trackhouse at Atlanta, Suarez has 4 top 5s in 5 races, including a win. He has finishes of 5th and 25th at Watkins Glen and has an average finish of 19th at Bristol. This round of the playoffs doesn't suit Suarez very well, and I don't think that he will make it past the round of 16. 10 seed, Austin Cendrick. Austin Cendrick made the playoffs by backing into a win earlier in the season at Gateway, but since that win, he only has 4 top 15s in the last 11 races. Cendrick also has the second worst average finish among the playoff drivers, only behind Harrison Burton. But despite all this, I can easily see him making the round of 12. He is always in the mix at Atlanta, and has some decent results on road courses. But the concern is Bristol. Cendric has a best finish of 19th, but in 2022, that was enough to get him through. And I believe it will be enough again. But I expect him to be nowhere close to making the round of 8 unless he just happens to have really good days at Talladega and the Roval. Which I believe is possible, but I don't think it'll happen. At best, Cendric contends for a round of 8 spot this year. 9 seed, Joey Logano. Joey Logano is having his worst season since 2011, his Joe Gibbs racing days. This season has been an absolute disaster for Logano. He has the 4th worst average finish among the playoff drivers at 18.3. He is also on pace 
for career lows in every category since joining Penske. And if it wasn't for his lucky win at Nashville, he probably wouldn't have been close to making the playoffs. I think the best Logano can do is maybe get to the round of eight, but I just can't see him going on a deep playoff run. Eight seed, Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski finally broke that three-year winless streak and now has a win as a co-owner. Keselowski has been really solid this season. He has the fourth best average finish in the series. Keselowski has been really solid this season and he has proven that RFK is a legit team in the Cup Series. Now last season I said Keselowski would make the round of eight and I was dead wrong. But this year I think he will go all the way to the round of eight and might come close to the final four. 7 seed, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott has been solid but not great this season. He has an unbelievable 24 top 20s and only 1 DNF with 12 top 10s, 7 top 5s, and a win with 213 laps led. But that's the problem. Elliott has been decent but not great. He has not led more than 70 laps in a single race. Elliott has been decent but I just can't consider him to be a major championship contender. I think Elliott will easily make the round of 12 and the round of 8, but the final four at this point is a large stretch. Six seed, Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin has had another great season, but a lot has now been overshadowed by an L2 penalty that basically cost him 13 playoff points. Hamlin could have been the three seed, but this penalty cost him. Now I think that he'll have no issue making it deep in the playoffs, but making the final four will be a steep challenge for Denny. 5 seed, Ryan Blaney. The defending champion Ryan Blaney has avoided the championship hangover and has recorded two wins in the regular season has been really solid this season. He has the ninth best average finish among the playoff drivers. Blaney has made a nice rebound after a rocky start to the season. In the seven races before Daytona, he had two wins, three top fives, and five top tens to get himself around the top five in points. Blaney could easily make the round of eight and possibly the final four. 4 seed, William Byron. Now while this season has been a slight regression from last year, Byron has still been really solid. He has 3 wins, which all came in the first 8 races, but since then he has recorded 5 top 5s and 8 top 10s. Byron also has the 4th best average finish in the series. Now while he did have a summer slump, this is typical for Hendrick Motorsports cars, and he has been gaining some momentum recently. Solid top 5 at Pocono, a 2nd at Michigan, and before he got wrecked, he had a top 5 car at Darlington. I believe Byron will make a deep playoff run for the third year in a row. 3 seed, Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick has finally broke through and has proven himself to be a top driver in the Cup Series. Reddick has been so consistent in the second half of the regular season. In the last 13 races, he has 1 win, 7 top 5s, 11 top 10s, and an average finish of 7.6. That is unbelievable consistency. And it was this consistency that allowed him to beat Kyle Larson for the regular season championship. Reddick has been elite this season, and I could easily see him contending for the championship at the end of the year. The two seed, Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell has been the definition of checkers or wreckers this season. Bell has three wins and ten stage wins, but he also has six DNFs. Bell has been fast, but he's wrecking a lot. Now he has gotten better in recent weeks and has been improving, and I honestly think Bell can easily make the final four. And right now, he is the title favorite and I can't blame people who consider him to be. He absolutely dominated the Spring Phoenix race and a lot of people think that this might be a sign of things to come, and it may very well be. Look for Christopher Bell to make the final four for the third straight season. And the number one seed, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson has asserted himself as the top dog in the Cup Series. He leads the series in wins, laps led, and poles. Larson has been elite this season with 4 wins and 1,088 laps led, which is 300 more than second place Christopher Bell. Larson is almost an automatic lock for the Final Four in 2024, and look for him to be in contention for it all in November. Now for the predictions. Each driver I eliminate, I am going to do the ones that I feel like are going to be the furthest from making the next round to the closest. To open the playoffs at Atlanta, I believe Kyle Busch will finally get a win in 2024. At Watkins Glen, I think William Byron will win, and then Brad Keselowski will get it done at Bristol. So in the first round, let's get the obvious out of the way, with Harrison Burton. 
he will be eliminated. Then I have Daniel Suarez and Joey Logano missing the next round. And in his retirement tour, I have Martin Truex Jr. missing the round of 12. In the round of 12, Tyler Reddick will continue the 23-11 dominance at Kansas. Then, Ryan Blaney will pick up a win at Talladega and Christopher Bell will win at the Roval. In this round, Austin Cendrick will meet his end, as will Ty Gibbs. Chase Briscoe will fall short and Alex Bowman will narrowly miss out on the round of 8. In the round of 8, William Byron will pick up the W at Las Vegas. Kyle Larson will continue his homestead dominance and Christopher Bell will win at Martinsville. And the guy making it on points will be the regular season champion, Tyler Reddick. The reason I don't see Kislowski making it is due to him being lower in the standings and also not having the best stats at Miami. I don't think Blaney is going to make it to the Final Four because Team Penske has not had the speed of 2311, Hendrick, or Gibbs. I don't think Elliott will make it because like I said earlier, he's been good but not great. Hamlin will not make it due to that penalty. I feel like it just cost him any shot he had later in the playoffs. Now in the Final Four, that gives us a battle between Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, and William Byron. Now as for the driver that I have winning the entire thing, my pick is Tyler Reddick. Reddick has been unbelievably consistent this year and the Toyotas are fast on the flat tracks and they showed tremendous speed earlier in the year at Phoenix. So for that, Tyler Reddick is my pick to win it all at Phoenix. Well, those are my predictions for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. But anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next time for another video.